Hey everyone and welcome back to a new episode of the Angular Spring Boot course. In the previous episode, we saw how we can modularize our application by leveraging components and we created, we started to create our component tree. So we have parent components, we have child components, but at this moment in time they don't communicate with one another. And in this episode, we are going to see how to facilitate component communication using the input and output decorators. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Now, back to input and output. Well, we left our application like this. Now, we have a parent component, we have a child component. In our case, the child is the note, is the component that visually represents you know the yellow sticky note and the parent is the notes component you know the the component that contains all the notes that contains the um, uh, notebook menu the buttons and so on and so forth so the parent is like an orchestrator now they don't communicate with one another by default because in angular components are meant to be as isolated as possible so each component has its own scope um, its own style as you saw and you know, by default, they don't share information. So uh, there is no way for the parent to access data in the child and no way for the child to access data from the parent just like that, you know. Um, but, you know, there had to be a communication mechanism because in complex applications, components need to, com to communicate. And this is where input and output come in. Now, let's start with the first one, with input. So. A parent can share its data with a child using the input component. And the arrow here represents the data flow. So for example, if the parent has a property, uh, I don't know, title, you know, that data can be made available to the child using the at input decorator. Uh, pay attention that data is not, uh, you know, a bidirectional affair. So only the parent can share data with the child. If we refer to children, you know, a child cannot share data, but a child can emit events. So when something happens to the child, you know, the child has a, the opportunity, he has the option to, sorry, he has the option to signal that uh, event using the output decorator. So parents share data using input and children share events not data using at output okay so this is the communication mechanism between um, two angular components that have this parent child re relationship so we have two flows of data you no know, two flows actually one is a flow of data the other one is a flow ev of events and now that we've discussed the, the theory uh, let's see how we can make our components communicate with one another and bring back the functionality to the noted app. We left our application in this state. We are displaying a list of notes, but there is nothing being written in here. We have no title, no description, you know, this button doesn't do anything. And that's perfectly fine because if you take a look at our code in the notes component, so in the parent, uh, we're actually iterating over the list of notes. <coughs> and for each note, we are generating you know, we are repeating a uh, node component, okay? And this node component, you know, it has a field of type node, which um, we use to display information. And I think it's this one, okay? But nothing gets displayed because uh, in that iteration of nodes, we do not share data. So the parent doesn't pass in data to its child. So we're just iterating over the nodes and it's playing this component, but we are not actually passing, you know, this data that the child component needs. So let's go ahead and, and fix that. We're going to our node component. So we learned that a parent shares data with a child component via the input decorator. So we can say here input, okay. And a decorator okay so it has to be like that okay I'll import this okay so now now this uh, piece of information 
was merged with the input decorator, which means that it will allow parents to actually, you know, add data in here. So if you go to the parent component, which is this one, we can actually pass in this information to our app node component. So we can go here and notice that we have uh, this new directive in here. So we can use this node directive and the name basically corresponds to the name of the field that you want to pass in as input. And we have to pass an instance of a node. In our case, this node. Okay, to make things less confusing, I'll just say let n of nodes and I want to pass in the node input via n. Okay, so now this property, so this one, will receive, you know, the node details for the current node. And, okay, we recompile our application, we refresh it, and now we can see that information is being passed to the child components and we have successfully used uh, input to pass data from the parent to the child. We can pass data, but we cannot handle events. Now, if you go to our app and if you try to click the delete button, nothing is being uh, executed. Also, what's important to know is that if you try to modify the title, for example, there is no HTTP request to update the node. So the events are basically trapped inside the node component. I mean, we have to reach for the functionality in the container, so in the node component, to enable them. And we, to, to do that, we need to use um, the output decorator. So we need to allow the child component to send events back to the parent. Okay, so we go here. We have our empty methods for update node and delete node. Okay, they have already been integrated in the node components template. And what we need to do is each time we perform this update, we need to trigger an event that eventually will need to reach the parent component. And we kind of need to hit this method. So the delete node method and the update node method. So we need to reach these methods so that the application logic is reverted to a correct state. And these methods need to be here because, you know, this is the orchestrator and each time, for example, we delete a node, you might, you know, want to do, uh, we might want to update the list of nodes or, you know, we might want to log something. So it makes sense that, you know, delete node and update node functionality are not present in the node itself. But even if that were not the case, you know, we're just trying to prove the, you know, communication concept in here. Now, what we want to do is we want to create our events and we'll use the output decorator and we'll create two events. So note updated. And remember this is an event. So this is of type event emitter and we can use the generic form. Uh, the generic form is the event data that gets passed in through this event so we'll pass in some note information and we can actually initialize this event so i can see a new event emitter of type note and we can create another event note deleted event emitter of type note is a new event emitter okay cool so what do we do in these methods? We just need to trigger these events. So uh, events, you know, we don't use them like data, you know, we cannot pass data to them, but instead we have to trigger them from within this component. So each time you want to update a node, we can emit this event and then the container component will pick it up and do something with it. So we can say here, node updated and we can pass in the data, so the actual note that is being deleted, uh, updated, sorry. And of course, we can say note deleted, we trigger this event, okay. Okay, let me just check if I 
did it correctly event emitter of type node um yeah sorry my bad all right so you have to call the emit method okay that was a silly mistake okay so we trigger these events by calling the emit method on these event emitters and then we have to pass in node data so we can actually grab it from here and pass it in both of these methods but if you go to our app you know it's still not enough i mean just triggering those events is the first step we now have to intercept them and we do that interception in the parent component and in the parent component very similar to a click event now we have these two directives so not updated not deleted the names are the names we provided in here and these are very similar to you know the click events of a button so um, when the node is updated so on this event i want to call in the update note method that resides in the parent component and we have to pass in a note and in our case the note is the actual you know event you know args okay and then well but sorry you actually have to call it dollar event uh, and now we have note deleted and we need to call this method over here delete note and we are also passing you know the event data as an argument because the event argument is of type note and these methods expect a note to be passed in okay we are doing some little cleaning up okay and now let's see how our application behaves okay we fire it up once again okay and let's say i want to make a modification i'll just clear all this so hello note and now we can see that we have a post request with the note update so the update seems to be working and we can create a new note in here new note 2 okay i'm deleting this i'm pressing the delete button okay and now we can see that our request for delete is made and this list of nodes that gets displayed is now empty so we have this message over here cool now we have our parent and our child components communicating via input and output you know and the application state uh, and functionality has been restored cool now that's it for today this is how you use input and output decorators to com to you know enable communication between components before we close i would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the romanian coder youtube page and click on the subscribe button also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at RomanianCoder and you can also check out my blog www.RomanianCoder.com Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye!